in this tutorial we're going to develop on from the last one so in the last one we ended up uh, implementing some shooting mechanics and the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to start tracking uh, how many bullets the player actually has and as a result of that then we're going to be able to develop some pickup items uh, so the first thing we'll do is we're going to start um, we're going to pop back into the first person character and this is our input action fire and we're probably down the line we're probably going to end up making this its own little function but for now it can kind of sit inside here and that's okay so what we need now is we need uh, an ammo counter and what we're going to use for that is we're just going to use an integer so anytime we want to make a new variable we can just hover over here and we're going to create a new variable and it's going to be called ammo so if I hit enter there, so whenever I clicked on a variable here, you can see there's different variable types. Um, and this is set to a Boolean at the minute, which is like a true or false. Um, we want to change that to an integer because that's what we're going to be tracking. And that's just a solid number, no decimal places in it. So ammo is now set to be an integer. So if we hit compile, you can see that it has a default value of zero. So what we want to do is every time that we fire our gun, we want to take one off the ammo and then set the number to be that new number. So if we say to begin with that, we're going to have an ammo of 10. So all I've done is change that default value. So what we can do is whenever our bullet gets fired, we're going to do some extra stuff on that. So we are going to drag an ammo. So just click and drag it in. Um, and then we're going to choose to set it. So every time we shoot, it's going to set ammo. But we want to feed it in a, a different number here. Because at the minute if we shoot, I'll just show you. Print string, and if we were to plug that in there. Whenever I shoot now, it just sets our ammo to zero. So what we want to do is... After we shoot, we want to get the ammo. We want to take a certain amount off it. And then we want to set it then. Okay, so all it's doing is it's taking ammo, it's taking off one, and then it's setting it. So if we were to play now, let's reconnect that into our print string. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Now the problem is if I've got one bullet, and now I've got no bullets, if I keep shooting, uh, we're into negative bullets. Okay. So we know that this is working okay. So every time the bullet gets spawned, it gets the ammo, takes one off it, and then it sets that ammo. But what we need to do here is we need to actually check, do we have any ammo to begin with? So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to grab this ammo, drag it in here. So we're going to get the ammo. We're going to drag off this little node here. And we're going to say, is it less than or equal to a certain integer? So it, is it less than or equal to zero? Okay. Now the, you can see now this is outputting a Boolean, which is that initial uh, variable type that I made by mistake at the start. So if we drag off that, um, you can type branch for this, or if you type if, it'll find the same thing. So branch is like a, it is like an if statement. Um, if anyone's done programming before, that'll seem fairly familiar. So this is just saying, whenever we press the button, it's gonna check, is this true or false? And then we can do something as a result of that. So it's saying, do we have zero or less ammo? So if that's false, then we're going to shoot. Meaning if we have one ammo, we're going to shoot two ammo, three ammo. If that's true, we're going to do a print string that says get more ammo. And then when we do shoot, it's going to take one off and it's going to show us how many bullets we have left eight seven six five four here we go and now it won't let me shoot 
So the blueprint is getting this far. It's finding out that this statement's true and then it's never running uh, this series of events. So it's working fine. So what if we wanna add more ammo? If we wanna actually be able to pick up stuff in the game world. Um, so now that we've got this, this can be accessed from other blueprints. So the way that we do that is we're gonna make a new blueprint actor. So a new blueprint class and it's an actor. And we're gonna call BP underscore ammo pickup. So straight away, I'm gonna put that in the game world. I'm gonna double click. I'm gonna add a couple of components here so we can start interacting with it. So the first thing we need is a box collision. So same as I said in previous tutorials, I'm gonna tick off this little box here that says hidden in game, just so I can see it when I'm running around the game world. So if I hit play now, you can see there's my ammo sitting in front of me, okay? So now we know where we're going, whenever we wanna pick that up. So just to make this a little bit faster, this is my player start. I'm just gonna shift it a little bit forward in the level. So now I'm gonna hit play, we're a little bit closer to it. So what we want to do now is we want to obviously add something else to this so it's got some type of visible representation in the game so it's not an invisible box. So from there we're going to add a static mesh. So we click on add component. We're going to grab a new static mesh and we're going to decide what we want to add. So there are pickups um, in this game build. Um, so we got pistol pickups. Um, so if we were to add that, you can see now the mesh component gets added. So if we were to hit compile and then hit play in the game, you can see now that has um, a little status mesh actor attached to it. Okay, obviously we could scale that up. We could have a few of them in here if we wanted. Um, so for now, maybe we'll just um, scale it up a little bit. so it's a little bit more visible in game okay so what we need to do now is we want to check um, the overlap of this box because this is just a box collider that we've added in for better practice I mean I would probably tidy this up a little bit so it's not overlapping on the game world there we go that looks a bit tighter so what I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to do this wrong to begin with um, just to show how it works so we can now click on this box collider and we can add events based on what's happened. So we've done this in a previous tutorial, but if anyone hasn't followed it, I'll just do it real quick. So we have this box collision. So when we click on that, and we look at our details panel, we've got a series of events that we can call on. So we can say if a component hits this or if something begins an overlap that we want to do something. So we're going to say, um, we're going to go with a on component begin overlap. Okay. So we say when something overlaps with this, we want to do something. So straight away, um, what I like to do is I just test the collision. So we'll go print string and we'll go collide. So if we were to hit play in the game now and we were to run over that box, we should get a print string that says collide. Okay. And it looks like that's working. But it's a problem because now our bullet can, can collide. So that's why in a previous, like the light tutorial, I did a quick check to see was it the player that was colliding with it. So we can do that again. So we can say the other actor that's colliding, get its class, and then check to see is it equal to a certain one. So that would be a first person character. And then we would say, if that's true, so we need a branch. Collide. If it's not true, we'll do a print string to say, not the player. Okay. You see now when the bullet goes in, it's saying not the player. When I go in, it's saying collide. So that's a real quick way of doing it. You might not use this all the time, but you might just want to do a real fast check to say, um, is this the correct blueprint that's overlapping? If it is, I want to do some stuff. 
but we're going to do something a little bit different here. So we know that our collision works fine on that. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop back to our first person character and we're going to create an event which will add ammo. Um, so all we do is right click in a bit of empty space and we're going to make a custom event. And we're going to name it add ammo. So what add ammo is going to do is it's going to grab, it's going to get the ammo. It's going to add a certain amount to it. So a plus. So it's an integer plus an integer. And then it's going to set the ammo. Okay. So whenever add ammo gets called, what we'll do is we'll do a value of 10. And just to see if it works. Later on, this will be linked to a a widget, like a UI element, so we can see it. But to see if it works, we're going to print string the ammo on screen. And what I'll do here is I'm just going to add in a little tool called append. Um, so an append will let you add bits to a string. So I'm going to say ammo. And then we're going to add in that version, and then that's going to plug. So it's, it's going to go, it's going to get the ammo, add it there after the word ammo. So real quickly, we can see about calling this, um, and I'm going to bind this to a key called H, um, and we're just going to call add ammo. So we're going to go see if this works to begin with. So if we're pushing play, so I've got eight bullets, if I push H, I've got 18 bullets, if I push H again, we've got 28 bullets. So now our ammo counter is working just fine. So if I got 30 and I hit H, now I've got 40. So add ammo is working, but we're not going to use this. Um, we're going to call it in a different way. Uh, and the way we're going to call it is we're going to do a thing called casting. So on begin overlap, instead of doing this, we're going to cast to first person character. And that is the other actor. And now this is getting us access to this blueprint. So this is send a message in. And now we can call on that function. So as first first uh, as first person character, easy for me to say, we can say add ammo. Okay, so now if the overlap is the first person character, it's going to call an event called add ammo. If we double click on that, it's going to take us over here and it's going to add that together. So let's give it a test, see if it works. So we got six bullets. I'm shooting, it's not working. If I step over it, it adds 10. If I step over it, it adds 10. And it'll keep doing that. So that overlap is doing a quick cast to the player and then it's calling that function. And then it's just printing the string on screen and that's working fine. So the next thing we want to do is we don't want the player to be able to constantly run over these pickups and get unlimited ammo. If you did, that we would just leave the blueprint exactly like this. So the last thing we're going to do is we're going to say whenever this happens, uh, just destroy the actor. And the actor is set to self, which means it was just destroy the ammo pickup. So we hit play. We'll run our ammo all together so we can't shoot. Run over it. It's deleted itself and it's given us 10 bullets. So that's a real quick way of implementing an ammo pickup. The next thing that you might want to try and do is this event here can be given an input. So we can say that whenever you call this, let us send a value of it. Um, so we could call that ammo in and we would change it to an integer and ammo in could actually be pressed in here so that way we could have different amounts being sent in so all that is is whenever this function gets called it's now taking an input so it's sending a message over and this is receiving the input and it's just adding it on and that could be a variable here that we make inside this blueprint called ammo amount 
and we would change that to an integer as well. Compile, and maybe ammo amount by default is 15. And we plug that in there. So now whenever it's called, it's going to send ammo amount into the ammo add, the add ammo function, and then it's going to add it on. So if we run over it, it's send that through for us. Okay. So if we go to zero ammo, we got no ammo at all. Now we got 15. Because that's being sent from here the whole way into that other script. So there's one last thing that you might want to try is that amount is hard coded to 15 at the minute, but we want, might want to change that in the level. So we can make this public. So what that means now is in every instance of this blueprint that can be changed. So we can set this next one to be 10 and you see now it exposes it in the editor. And we could say this one's going to be five and maybe this one's going to be one. So now when I run over these different ones, I'm going to get different amounts. So we're going to shoot a little bit. So we got no ammo. We run over this first one, 15, because that's what we set of that in the editor. Next one gives us 10. Next one gives us five. Next one gives us one. And no the only thing that's different there is we've exposed this as being public and now when we're in the editor it could be accessed here and can be modified so it's a real quick way of just doing an ammo pickup and making it like a little bit more reusable as we go through